this time we'll have Chris to come. I appreciate Chris. Glad he's part of the church here with us. Nice to have him. Brother Richard, two or three preachers, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to steal a quote from Richard and say there's no place I'd rather be than here tonight. Amen. Better than being in jail and it better than being at the Super Bowl right now. Yeah, I, uh, I got it recording and I, apparently on my VCR, I don't think I've seen a VCR in 10 years. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start our reading tonight in uh, James chapter 4. Start at verse 7. Give me an amen or a, a praise the Lord when you get there. Amen. So that's, that's about half of you, so we'll go ahead and start here. Chapter 4, verse 7. <laughs> verse 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. I really, you know, coming up with this, you know, adjust this so it's not so loud. You know, looking through what I was going to preach on this evening, I went through some things, went through some things as far as what I should and shouldn't you know, preach, and I kept running around to planning, and you know, just kept coming up, coming up. God's plan. What was what is God's plan? God's plan is obviously for the Bengals to win tonight. And if you agree with that, give me an amen or who day. <laughs> but going through, I, I thought about it. And in verse 8, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil. And he will flee from you, draw an eye to God. And I thought about it because I had, you know, coming out, I uh, had some change ups at work, and I was making a plan to get out, Richard. I plan to leave. I say, what well, he got to the day before I was going to put my notice in. Boss comes in, fires my other boss, and says, you're in charge now. I was like, well, I got some bad news for you, buddy. <laughs> but, I mean, it all worked out in the end. I stayed there, even though it you know, seemed like a less ideal situation at the time, and then the old guy I was going to go to work with says, oh, uh, you'd have been breaking your non-compete coming with me. I was like, well, <laughs> I guess the Lord knows better than me. But that's how it is, ain't it? Amen. You know, we think, you know, because I prayed on this. But I think it's human nature to, to pray on it. And then think, and just put a few suggestions in there. Just say, I... I'm going to follow you, Lord, but we're going to make some stops along the way right here and right here. It's like going on vacation with your family. Each person has their own plan on what's going to happen. But when it comes into verse 8, it says, Draw near, and he will draw near to you, draw nigh to you. You know, once we think we're, we're going good, the plan's going smoothly, we're not typically praying. I mean, that's that's kind of a stereotype. I have the same problem. If things are going good, I'll slip up. It's human nature. Things are going great. Things are going smooth. I don't really, not that you don't need them, but you don't think about it. You only think about it when things are going downhill. And it says, humble yourselves. I say, through the whole work situation, I've learned a lot about humility. In the face of, you know, me and the other guy at work, it's just the two of us, and we're both pretty young. The, the older crowd don't like a younger crowd be, 
by being there in charge. And it's been very humbling to see the stuff other people were doing. But that's a, that's a big problem in the church. If we have an issue that we need to bring to God, we don't bring it to the altar. Oh, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll do it later. You know, I don't want to do it right now. Or it's embarrassing. I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to make a scene. God, what he says, draw near. He's at, I mean, he asked you to do it. He's blatantly asking. And James goes on here. Say, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Your laughter, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy turned to heaviness. God's plan is going to work out in the end, but there's some rough patches. That's like if you want to drive to Virginia Beach right now, you got to drive through West Virginia, which is, I've been there multiple times, and it seems like there's road construction from state line to state line. I know nobody likes road construction, but right, it ain't fun for us, try, for us just trying to get through. But it seems like that. It's, you know, it seems like, you know, when you go through the dark parts, you start to question, is this your plan? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? I question that just about every sermon. You know, we're not all Moses. God doesn't give us a burning bush. Although I did see a car catch fire in Walmart today. That's pretty cool. That's why I'm not a Kroger shopper. You see the darndest stuff in Walmart. Believe you me, it's like a zoo in there. <laughs> but to humble yourself, I thought about that. <laughs> kind of moving on to the more serious parts here. And I thought, you know, you'll, you'll do something embarrassing away from here, away from church. I was at the ball game. I'm uh the Bengals beat the Chiefs probably a month ago. There was this guy on the other line, everybody had passed in a Kansas City shirt. He's like, I hope you fall down the stairs. And I was like, you know, that's a – they're saying there's some awful big guys, and I'm in between the stairs and this man. I was like, it's not going to be good for me. <laughs> I got my dad and two other old guys. I was like, these guys are frail. But then this guy says, what's well, off? It's not an awful nice thing to say. He's like, oh, I hope you get home safe. I don't want you to get hurt. I just hope you fall down the stairs. And that goes into what uh, James says here in verse 8. You sinners purify and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Because sometimes we can get a little double-minded in that. You ask for one thing. And then when you get that, you don't want it. Or you ask for opposites at the same time. You'll say, you know, Lord, send me a challenge. And then when the challenge of parts comes, the Lord, get me out of this. And instead of getting us out of this, Lord, get me through this. I don't want to be out. I'd rather go through. It's like going to Virginia. I could go around West Virginia, but it's going to be a lot further for no reason. Probably get there at the same time because these road construction crews up. But you tell you what, these guys, you can tell they're union. They work a slow stop sign. That's the speed they work at, ain't it, Odie? <laughs> but going into uh, Proverbs here, flipping over. I don't know why I'm flipping through. I got it marked. Proverbs 21, verse 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. I, I thought on that. I've usually got a little bit more in the verses here. That verse really says a lot, honestly. When you're going through life and you make your plans, you think, oh, it's foolproof. Nothing's going to happen. It's, you know, nothing's going off the rails. It's going to be smooth sailing from here. But it's human to error, and I think we all know that. And if you don't know that, you'll see on Facebook a car caught on fire because somebody erred somewhere. They either left the car on, somebody messed up at Chevy. They said Chevy Malibu. I was kind of sweating. I was like, do they mean Impala? <laughs> it about got real bad. <laughs> but 
But it goes to, it says, uh, every way is right in his own eyes. And even when we do something the Lord doesn't want, because of course we're all, you know, imperfect, none of us are flawless. And if you think you're flawless, come up here, we'll pray for you. Or you can tell us your secrets. But all, you know, everything we do is justified through us. But thankfully the Holy Spirit comes in you when you get, you know, when you get saved. Even the things you justified then, the Holy Spirit says, hey, that's not the plan. This is not, it's not the way we're going. We need to veer off, you know, take this exit, not that exit. It says, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. God knows exactly what he has in store for us. I believe he told Jeremiah something about that on the something along those lines. I don't have the verse with me. But we gotta choose to obey the path here. And are there rough patches through it? You betcha, but usually the rough patches, when you look back at it, are the times you learned something. The best times you had. If we're all truthful and honest. So my mom's always had the saying, if he's not fighting you, then he's already got you. Talking about, the, of course, the devil there, but. James talked about the double-minded. The, um, uh, the Bible says the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. As That's getting about to where we are today in the world. I have a fellow I work with is, I call him a worry wart, because everything... We uh, each day we get up, we open Internet Explorer, and it has the news right there. And I tell you what, everything that crosses that line worries him. Is it Russia's going to invade Ukraine or, you know, whatever? So and so won the election, and I'm over here clearing their sports columns and the finances columns because I don't really care if Russia invades Ukraine or not. It stinks for Ukraine, I guess. And yes. Why are you so calm about this? It's like, the Lord's got a plan. I, do you think I'm going to do anything about that? As a little old Chris ain't going to do much about you know, Vladimir Putin trying to expand the nation. But the Lord can. That's why I keep to give it to the Lord. If you, you know, some of us some, uh, ain't, ain't got a plan. And as my mom says, it doesn't even make sense to make a plan anymore. It's going to get thrown off the rails. <laughs> But, you know, we need to be truthful with God. Ask him, am I going the right way? Because I don't know if you ever, you know, have a certain Magellan in your family, but my dad's quite the, thinks he's quite the Magellan. He really thinks he knows where he's going. And I said, the map said go here. And he's like, no, I, I'm going the back way. I took this way in 1980. And I was like, were some of these roads back there? It was a million years ago. <laughs> but on that, you know, what can we do to stay on track with the Lord? Are we drawing near? Are we drawing near in the rough patches? Because that's the part, you know, things go rough. I start making, you know, split-second decisions without you really saying anything. It's kind of whiz bang boom on the decisions, and half of them are okay, half of them are doozies, though. But when you we sit there, you contemplate and you pray about it. God's not going to lead you the wrong way. That's right, amen. To kind of closing up, I'll turn it over so to Richard after this. You know what can we do to just stay on the path to draw near? Because as you said, if you turn on the news, it's usually we're all going to die or the Bengals are going to win. That's about the only thing I've seen on the news. And the fact it's supposed to be 60 degrees this week. I'm pretty happy about that. That's thinking Groundhog was wrong. <laughs> but after that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Richard. Knowing the plans that God has made for us is sometimes difficult, isn't it? 
it is hard to understand some of the things that we deal with in our lives. But, uh, you know, the main thing is that we have that peace of God in our heart that passes all understanding, which is we don't, uh, we don't have to understand. We don't have to have the answer to all these questions. We just have to have faith in the Lord. Amen. And I thought Chris uh, brought out some good points there. Amen. Uh, sorry about your dad. Uh, <laughs> we all have those people, you know, and I've been guilty myself. Well, I, I want to go this way and, and then the, the directions say go the other way, but that woman over there usually keeps a pretty tight uh, rain on me when I'm driving, so, and she informs me of all the lights that are red that I go through. Uh, so, <laughs> so sometimes, you know, I'm glad you pointed out we're not perfect, Chris. You know, we're, we're just not, you know, we're just not perfect. We may think we're perfect, but we have these little flaws about us. And aren't you glad for the grace of God takes care of that stuff? Amen. Amen. It really does. His grace is sufficient. Uh, he takes care of us even when things are turned upside down. Uh, he's still God, as I preached this morning. He doesn't change. And uh, I'm thankful for that. Amen. He's an amazing God. He is. He's really an amazing God. Amen. Are you glad to be in church tonight? Yes. Would you rather be at the ball game? No, if you, if you really were, you'd be there, right? If you really wanted to go and spend $20,000 to watch him win or lose. <laughs> Amen. Well, God's good. I'm glad for you, you that are here tonight and uh, keep everybody in prayer that was lifted up. Linda, I hope you get to feeling better. Uh, you're looking better. Keep eating those candy bars. <laughs> Amen. That'll help us when we get our sugar drops, and she's subject to that. But uh, I'm glad that God's got the remedy. Amen. Remember us tomorrow morning about 1030, and we'll, uh, I can't say I'll be remembering you about that time. <laughs> I hope I don't. I hope I don't know anything about that time. I'll just rest in God's hands and, and go from there. Amen. God's good. Let's stand together. If you're here tonight and you've got a prayer need, don't leave without bringing your burden to the Lord.